Um, welcome everyone to another ANS webinar event. It's a pleasure to have you all here online from near and far as part of the, the Greater ANS uh, webinar series, which today have included topics such as data management, data licensing, data citation, to name but a few. My name is Alexander Hayes and I have with me here on this sunny Canberra day, Jerry Ryder, research data analyst from at Anne's, who's flown all the way from Fair Adelaide. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. South Australia, to join us for this important event. And of course, a myriad of meetings that she's doing. <laughs> Welcome, Jerry. Uh, for your interest, everyone, and to acknowledge the significance of this webinar topic, uh, it's important to note that we've got attendees registered for this webinar from the University of Canterbury, New Zealand, University of Tasmania, the Australian Antarctic Division, the University of Edinburgh, Chair Sciences Australia, La Trobe University, University of Canberra Australia, Deakin University, University of Melbourne Australia, Wiley Publishers, University of Western Sydney, Griffith University, University of Queensland, uh, Research Data Storage Infrastructure, RDSI, Monash University, and that's just to name a few. But a few of these organisations, it's obviously for to whom data publishing is of great interest and an already an integral part of their research activities. So we've got very two distinguished guests today joining us today who are the privilege to have on board, given that the topic at hand is data journals. Jane Smith is the Sherpa Service Development Officer at the Centre for Research Communications, University of Nottingham. In this role, Jane's involved in a number of projects around open access information, including Romeo, the Juliet Open Door, Fact and Jord. And those of you who have been involved in institutional publications and repositories, you'll be familiar with at least some of these acronyms. Jane's here today to talk about the Jord project, the Journal Research Policy Data Bank, which has a particular focus on journal publishers' data sharing policies. We also have with us Dr. Fiona Murphy, who is the publisher for Earth and Environmental Sciences, Sciences Journals at Wiley working with a number of titles, societies, and other publishing partners. Uh, Fiona is also increasingly involved with emerging initiatives that promote good management practices of research data, including reuse, uh, use, citation, and linking from primary publications. Among other activities, uh, this has led to being a core partner in the PREPARED project on peer review and publication of data sets, and to membership of the STM Association, Association Research Data Group and World Data Systems Data Publication Working Group. Now for a very brief background on ANS activities. During late 2012, ANS staff undertook a, a desktop survey to identify data journals across a range of disciplines in order to define what a data journal is, to review data journal policies in particular, looking at requirements for DOIs, data deposit and data citation, as well as to assess the status of data journals surveyed, taking into account years established peer review processes and whether they're indexed, in fact, by Thomson Reuters Web of Science. So we're pleased today to be able to bring together these lead international initiatives and these guest speakers in a webinar that will sure will shed some light on the policies devised by academic publishers to promote linkage between data journals, journal articles and underlying research data. Um, so I'd like to welcome uh, Fiona Murphy, who has been involved um, in a sister project with uh, uh, sister project to Jord, but also has some uh, experiences in her role from Wiley as well. So Fiona, uh, I think we should be able to see your screen now. Yeah, can you? Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Yep, it says showing screen here. Okay. Right, I'll take it away then. Thanks. Um, I'm going to say it. Good morning, everybody. Um, and obviously, good afternoon to, to most of the people here. And thank you very much for inviting me to, to speak to you today. Um, I just wanted to, to say, I'm going to um, uh, talk a bit about um, some of the things that I've been doing um, around publishing research data and also sort of um, touch on, on some other things that are going on as well. Um, I wanted to start, though, with um, just a couple of, of what and why slides, just to make sure that um, we're all maybe starting from the, the same starting point. So here you go. So what do we mean by, by publishing data? Um, I think it's analogous to, but not precisely the same, 
as publishing primary data. Uh, no, no, I'm just trying to get um, your square a bit smaller because it's really massive and I can't actually see my own slides very well. There we go. There we go. Um, and it's not looks like precisely the same as, as publishing primary research. Um, in insofar as um, primary research output is generally a, a finished product, whereas whereas um, the data underlying it is, of, is often um, raw or in various sort of states of, of partial process. So data should also be, and now I can't, there we are. It should be permanently um, or long term archived in a reliable repository. And I put reliable in quote marks because I think that can be a, a problematic concept all, all on its own. Should be allocated a persistent identifier. Um, I would say DOI, but um, I think there is also there are also problems around you know, the nature of different kinds of data sets, which can mean that um, a URI um, or even a, a web link is is the only thing that's possible for in certain cases. And there should be um, a critical level of, of metadata to allow discoverability. To, to enable people to, to, to find um, a particular data set and to know what it is that they're looking at. And then the why. Why would we publish data? Well, there's a very good reason to, um, to provide academic credit to um, the scientists, particularly the kinds of scientists who traditionally haven't been able to accrue publications and the, the, kind of the status and career path that, that um, go along with that. And also, um, the publication path is, is one which, which is known within research communities um, and, and could be incorporated into, into current um, re research and proposal grant workflows. Hopefully, it ensures that the data set is, is uploaded to, again, a, a trust repository um, and you can, you can have some um, reliance on, on of archiving and, and curation practices, and again, I think that's something that, that's emerging as a, as a, a need for a more sort of general and better understood um, best practice or sort of standards and accreditation rules. Um, got peer review processes. And this is another thing that um, I think. I'm sorry, I couldn't switch my Skype off. If that's if that's annoying people, I hope it's not too bad. Um, it's peer review. Um, I think that's another another part of the the, the data publication process, which um, is again analogous to um, the primary research piece, um, but it's also not exactly the same. It gets, it's um, it's something that people have a great deal of, of issue with um, because of the the size of potential data sets, time that um, or the skill that might be required to um, to actually uh, manage a peer review. The fact that um, it's quite well known that reviewers are already under a great deal of, of strain and time pressure, so um, that's that's a potential sort of pain point in the process. Um, publication of data again, if we're saying that it would then become more well discoverable, more permanently available, um, then you know hopefully it would it would then be more visible to people you know who aren't necessarily in the know immediately to to be able to um, to find and reuse. And transparency, um, it, it you know it it should also um, you know, support the, the the movement towards um, accountability to the public and to the funding agencies. Um, given that you know, a lot of money does get spent in in research, and uh, you want to see what it is you've got. And that felt that's the other the other really good reason why why you'd want to to publish the research because it's the way that so the research data. It's the way that the wind is just generally blowing. Um, many of you are probably aware that um, the White House um, Office of Science and, and Technology Policy had a, a big meeting last week about public access to um, federally funded um, research, and they spent half the time talking ab about data as opposed to, to just um, uh, I suppose the, the regular or standard um, you know, research output. Um, Science is an Open Enterprise report um, came out at the end of 2011, I believe, and um, it's um, it's a very interesting report, um, and it, it it does make the case that um, that science and you know thereby all kinds of research uh, should be um, open up to um, the people that paid for it and anyone that wants to use it, and people should be able to find their way around in it. Um, and in fact, it's um, I've heard the uh, the report's main author speak, and he makes a very clear case that librarians are are key to to this um, new paradigm. 
And Horizon 2020 is another one I just I just picked is um, the EU's program, that's the European Union's program for research and innovation. They've got a budget that was um, 80 billion euros. I think it might have been cut a little bit, but um, they're, they're absolutely um, placing a, a, a top priority on um, opening up research and, and allowing, um, also facilitating and um, the capacity to to build data set knowledge um, to be able to um, uh, find interoperability and synergies and to, to drive new um, insights and, and business models and, you know, and growth and jobs and generally they, they see this as being um, really key to, to, to Europe's long-term viability and, and uh, prosperity. So what do publishers do? Well, one of the things that, that we can do, I guess, uh, um, is our sort of knee-jerk reaction to most things is start a new journal. So Geoscience Data Journal um, is, a, is a partnership um, between Wiley and um, the Royal Meteorological Society. Um, and uh, it's also been supported by NERC, which is the Natural Environment Research Council in the UK. In particular, the British Atmospheric Data Centre um, has been very helpful, giving us a lot of time and, and people space um, to, to work through how we might, how we might set this up and, and make it work. As you can see, um, we publish short data papers which are cross-linked to and which cite data sets that have been deposited in an approved data center and awarded a DOI or, or another permanent identifier. And I've also put a, a little description here of what, a, what we believe a data article is and, um, and, why, and why it's, it's a good thing to do. As you, as you see, it's the when, the how, the why the data was collected and what the data product is. And um, it, it's a way of, of pulling together all the, all the um, parts of the, the, the project, the output, that would um, enable your reproducibility um, and also reusability. So I've also I've put a, a, a splash page here um, of a, what the article looks like. And I wanted just to draw your attention to the fact that there we've got the, the DOI of the article itself. But we've also put the, the DOI of the data set up there on the front page. Um, we, we felt it was it was really important to have have it um, sitting, um, you know, up, up there amongst the front matter, really prominent, so that people can can see how it um, sort of relates to the article overall. Um, I did want to mention as well that we we also put the DOI in the reference list um, because we're we're wanting to to support the, the general citation of of data sets. Um, and we're also mindful of the the Thompson Data Citation Index, which is which is being um, pulled together at the moment. And we want to make sure that um, that we, we support whatever um, working workflows that that they eventually come out with. So um, I've got here on the left um, a picture of of um, the workflow as we as we envisaged it at, at the beginning. And as you can see, there's um, it's pretty complicated. There are a lot of processes, and there are a lot of um, parts where we felt the um, the researcher is almost being kind of battered between, say, the publisher and the editorial process um, of the primary research paper, but also um, the repository and and the, the data set itself. And we felt that um, you know it, it, this is a potential um, barrier to to people really um, picking up and, and and running with them with this sort of um, publication. So we started, um, you know, isolating, trying to name the the issues we felt were, were the key ones. And so there was a workflow and cross-linking issue. The, you know, the journal and the repository need to be able to speak to each other. Um, we need to know um, something about the repository in order to be able to work with it, including, um, you know, whether, whether it's whether it's going to be here next year. You know, what 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 happens to a data set that that goes into that repository? Um, I felt that it was. Um, in, intrinsic to um, calling something a journal is that there should be peer review. But again, as I, I mentioned earlier, um, peer review of, of data sets is um, it's, it's a big ask um, and people aren't really clear what it is they're supposed to do. And, um, and just, just generally, um, I think um, Jane touched on it as well, that um, you know, people, um, you know, researchers, um, they are being slightly, slightly pushed towards behaving in this sort of way, but they're also um, having to operate in the, the real world where um, if, you've, if you've painstakingly compiled a data set, you, you don't want just to be without achieving any, any credit um, 
yourself and it's um it's important to be able to to engage with people and, and answer questions address concerns and and adapt as as required so um we felt that the, the that also boiled down to the, the need for um and a better understanding of how we, this sort of a publication um a journal and a repository um, would would interact in which case um, we, we started um, working on the prepared project. That's where that came in. And again, like, like George, it's uh, it's disc funded, um, and they're managing research data strand. So um, I've put up up here the um, the key partners, um, the contact details of the project leads, and as you can see, we're coming towards the the end of our our cycle. So um, we've got some, some outputs, and we've got some some finals, and concluding, like to to point out. So one of one of our work packages, one of the one of the um, areas we've been investigating is repository accreditation. Um, because clearly, if you've got a data paper, uh, the data set, there needs to be a very you know a, a strong durable link. Um, but there are um, a lot of questions that that you know we 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 have to find we have to know on an individual basis if a repository is trustworthy. But um, we then we need to have some way of of um, sealing that, of, of publicizing that, and of um, generally ensuring we don't have to keep duplicating that work every time every time um, we either start a new journal or another publisher wants to work with that repository. So um, we, were, we were looking to um, to see how to start pulling pulling that um, insight and information together. Um, as you can see, we've put um, a list of the characteristics that we, we've been looking at around the repository accreditation. Um, and the um, how you assess whether um, a repository is is um, good to work with, and um, we've actually we're in the process at the moment of um, finding some some recommendations, which um, I'll give people a, a note of how to um, to interact with in a moment. Which is the um, second um, key area of our, of our studies is the peer review of data. Um, as you can see, we had a, we had a workshop. Uh, a couple of months ago, and um, we decided that we had three recommendations: um, the need to connect data review with data management planning. So to um, to basically pull the data management plan, which hopefully happened much earlier in the process, with the review, which then happens at the end. So you can connect what was the what was the project what um, supposed to achieve, what was the what was the data that was supposed to come out, and how is it supposed how is it supposed to be collected or or used or assessed. Um, we wanted to um, show that there, there's a, two sets of reviews. There could be a scientific review, there could be a technical review, and these both um, needed to be uh, reflected in in the curation and the information that was in held about the data set. So, um, and we also wanted to um, connect the processes of of the data review with the article review. Um, as you can see, we've we've got a, a, a formal um, document for comment. Which um, is up on that URL there, and um, there's a, also a, a mail list. This is uh, the data publication um, uh, email address, which um, it's it's very easy to to join and to to comment on. I'd be very happy if you, if you were to do that. You can also find uh, if you join the list and then um, go back through some of the previous posts. Um, you can also find the material around the. Um, the uh, repository accreditation. So most recently, we were looking at, at cross-linking and um, workflows. So we only just had the work um, workshop on on that one, and so I've just put the some preliminary findings from that. Um, the loudest voice actually was, um, as I was touching on before, the need for there to be some sort of central registry of broker, and that's partly, um, I think, also related to the um, accreditation. Issue, but it's also to do with the fact that at the moment um, all the the links are, are bilateral, and um, and any information uh, that's sent between them is um, largely manual, and um, and that's it's just not going to be workable to to try and and, and build that up. If you can imagine, um, that in a world where um, a lot of um, data sets are being cited, um, and you're wanting to um, collect, catch, capture. Um, Information about who cited what um, has a an article cited a data set has a um, a data paper pulled together you know multiple data data sets and and then cited them that um, we we just um, you know they could be sitting in different um, 
data centers, um, and they, we, we just can't keep a, a track on that manually. Um, I think something along the lines of um, like Crossref, Crossref um, brokerage, um, maybe something around um, Thomson Reuters and the ISI might be a, might be a possibility. But um, it feels that, that if in order for people to be um, incentivized to publish data sets, we need to be able to collect the, the citations, and that then needs to be done in a manageable way. Um, and as we said, so data citation, I think, is also emerging as um, a currency that, that's understood amongst um, researcher communities. Um, and the, in fact, data, data citation is, like publication of data, it's analogous to, but not exactly the same as, uh, as primary research. Um, if you can imagine, if you've got a long-term um, observation uh, data set in, in the atmospheric sciences, um, a data set could be could be cited and then the same data set could be cited a year later and it would in fact be a different data set. So there, there's a certain amount of, of something being fixed and yet not fixed, uh, which you, you certainly don't get with primary research articles. But the concept of citing that data set is, is something that um, I think many of us are, are familiar with. So um, I also wanted, in the interest of fairness, um, to, to mention, you know, obviously, um, while I'm not the only um, a scientific technical publisher, um, and we also, um, I'm, I'm also aware of, and in fact, applaud the fact that um, many, many publishers are um, exploring uh, this this area, and I think it, it's a sign of its of its growing. Um, <sighs> importance um, and people just realizing that that that, um, that this is going to be critical for, for underpinning scholarly communication going forward so um, this I've just been put a few um, journals and um, publications um, down here to, to illustrate that and I'm aware this is by no means exhaustive we actually do have quite a good list on the prepared website that was one of the things that we, we did was to um, pull together a list of, of data journals which again people are welcome to go and have a look at but um, Earth System Science Data um, is an EGU publication um, it's it's open access it's been going for about four years um, and it's it's um, fairly similar to um, Geoscience Data Journal it has a, an open peer review system and at one point it was also publishing supplementary information which which we decided we didn't want to do um, I think they, they've now they've now um, tightened up their their criteria um, scientific data from nature was um, announced very recently um, and I think that that was um, that was a real signal um, I think of, of, um, of the importance um, that, that this topics um, starting to, to starting to assume um, the the scientific data is going to be um, publishing what what then they've termed data descriptors, um, which I think are, are pretty much um, data papers, data articles, but um, I mean it, it it hasn't yet um, formally launched. So I think that's just a, a space to watch and um, get more information about as we go forward. Um, Giga Science by Med Central is very much a, a life and medical sciences um, sort of big data project. Um, and they, the Giga, Giga Science also uh, undertakes to um, hold the data set um, as part of, of the publication. Um, and Faculty of 1000 Research, F1000 Research, um, this is um, another um, quite new entrant into the field. Um, again, there's, it's, they have um, open, and, open peer review, which is also post-publication. Um, which is another one maybe to, to have a look at. It's also in the, the, the life sciences, medical, biomedical sciences, um, and but it's um, also um, building up partnerships with um, some of the, the, the um, sort of data centers such as Figshare, which um, will take um, your uninteresting data sets and allocate a DOI. You know, they're, they're interested in publishing negative results to, um, to just generally build the, 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 um, the canon of scientific technical knowledge. So I also um, thought it might be useful to, to mention a couple of, of things that um, you can go away and do you know, after this session. Um, you can have a look at our, our site, uh, um, which has got quite a lot of information about um, the um, work packages and the um, output that, that we're conducting, um, and also you know, the blog and you know, the, very, you know, the mailing list as well. And very, very welcome to, to join or interact with that. Um, more widely, there's a, a GISC mailing list which um, relates uh, which relates back to the website. Um, 
I mentioned earlier. And um, that's that's quite interesting. That that's very international. That's got a lot of um, librarians, data center managers, publishers, um, kind of interested um, researchers. Um, who, who are all trying to, to engage around this and, and it is picking up I think on a lot of the things that are, are going on that, that other organizations are, are um, in, engaged with. Um, Research Data Alliance, um, again, is quite another question, new initiative, which um, I know um, Anne's um, is, is very involved with and um, which I think is at a, at a point where it's it would be um, quite interesting, quite, quite useful to, to um, to, to at least engage with joining some of the mailing lists because there are a lot of working groups which are just getting off the ground at the moment. Some of them around things like data publication, data citation, um, capacity building, and so forth. So um, at, the very, at the very least, um, you know, it's, it's, you can keep an eye on what's going on just by, by being aware of them. Um, the World Data System um, is um, sort of another international organization which is encouraging a membership. Um, again, uh, um, I'm aware that the Australian Antarctic Data um, Centre is, is certainly a member, and the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. Um, but it's it's um, generally it has a mission to um, you know support the best practice of stewardship, curation, research data, and um, and you're you're invited to um, support the mission. Um, you can become an associate member, which doesn't involve paying any money, but which does involve um, you have been called to the table to to actually you know, engage with and support the um, sort of policies as they're, as they're emerging as they're worked through, and it's with a, with an idea of joining things up, I mean, supporting interoperability, um, and not reinventing the wheel as well. And I think um, that there is an, a potential issue that there are so many things going on at the moment that people could well be working in isolation, and um, and uh, say reinventing the wheel in several different places at once. But I think um, Research Data Alliance, the World Data System, are very much looking to see what's already out there um, and what's, what's good practice, where the low-hanging low fruit is, and to, um, to actually you know, build, build from there and, um, and support the things that are, that are already happening. So in the future, a little bit of a, a blue sky moment. Um, hopefully, I'll know a lot more about the future um, tomorrow because there's... There's, a, there's actually a, a meeting in Oxford. I've put the, the program there. Um, we're hoping to have at least some of the, the sessions um, um, broadcast or recorded, but um, hopefully there'll be a, a Twitter feed as well. And, um, and we'll, we'll try and make sure that there are some, there are some outputs that come out from that. More generally, I think um, <laughs> there's a sense that the stakeholders in this, in scholarly communication, um, are, we're, we're, in, we're in a shifting landscape. Um, I think it's really important that um, that we speak to each other, that, that we're, we're adaptable. Um, and I think that there's there's just so much to do that there should there should be space for for all of us within that. Um, and I think that that journals and scholarly communications are going to start really changing um, in the not too distant future. And I think there'll be um, there'll be more enriched content. There'll be more tools for query. Um, I think um, things like copyright and, and ownership are going to become they're going to they're going to adapt they're going to change I'm not going to say they're not less not so much important but I think um, they're, they're going to be um, important in a different way and that's it